Welcome! I am the Moonshin King to you. And here we have 30 things to do and know about Seoul. Seoul. South Korea. This has been requested for a while, so sorry to you, for you, for sure. For me and my incapacities and inabilities for me on this night. But however, we are going to get into this. It is, this is quite a long video, so I'm not sure if I might split this up into a few parts. I'm doing this a bit differently on my... I'm watching it on my phone, so hopefully the screen recording will be alright. But anyway, let's see how it goes. I have the uh, new lens on. Hopefully it looks good. The first time I've used it really for a video. 30 things to do and know about Seoul, South Korea. Wait, what was the rest of that title? Um... Oh well, that's basically the gist of it. So, here we go. 3, 2, 1, go. Here we are. Power of the music. Korea! Why, hello there. I'm currently in the middle. <laughs> Oh, why, hello there. You'll have to excuse me, I'm in the middle of reading one of my favorite Korean novels here in the city of Seoul. And today, I'm gonna to be sharing with you some of the best things that you can do on your trip to Seoul. So without further ado... What is the name of that um, outfit he's wearing? Very funky outfit right there. We saw like little glimpses, uh, not much at the moment. Seemed like an arcade room or something. Really like the look of these houses in the background. I'm assuming they're houses. Really uh, artistic looking. Um, it looks great, I think. Those uh, traditional old houses. Wonderful, for sure. Look at that long sort of hat, if that's the right word to use. Let's get started. Let's get started. Ooh, nice kick. Oh, that was... Now this is a city like I have never seen before. It's this ah. hyper advanced Asian city that loves poop emoji. Okay, he was being very naughty on that slidey thing. And loves spicy food. Coincidence? Spicy food. I think not. From its Korean barbecue restaurants, its vibrant alcohol-infused nightlife, and of course, its love for everything that Sounds is cute like and weird, I have never seen city. anything that quite compares to South Korea. After just shy of a week in Seoul, these are the 30 things, facts, and places mm -hmm. that I can't pronounce that you need to know about before arriving in this incredible traveler's destination. So, we're going to get into the 30 things, and I think I will stop after 10. And then if you want to see me continue, then do, do suggest and I will get to it for sure. Looking forward to seeing what Starting there is. Starting with number one, the lightning fast ah, internet at affordable amazing rates. Wi -Fi. From the moment I arrived at the airport, I was extremely excited. I had options to have unlimited internet on my phone for an entire month at basically the price I would pay for the most basic entry level plan in Canada. But the amazing thing was, the fast internet is not just limited to your phones, it's also in the hotels, the hostels, wherever you go, you can get huge files uploaded very quickly. And that makes me so, very happy. The second second thing you need to know is that Seoul is a- Straight away, that's a great, great plus. A great benefit for a lot of people to appreciate. A lot of people would be very, very happy with the fastest internet possible. So, off to a great start, I would say. Especially if you're on YouTube, don't have to worry about waiting around forever for uploads. But even if every every sort of area of life job that uh, professional job and work and sending email well emails shouldn't take that long anyway but sending large files and documents and always very useful to have the fastest internet a massive gargantuous monolithic city with different sides separated by a river it can actually take you quite a bit of time to get from one side to the other there's two main areas we stayed in there's gangnam and there's gangnam! i want to again reiterate now i know what the gangnam is 
Um, you probably know I'm referring to the song Gangnam Style by P.S.Y. who is a South Korean artist. Very hit! That was a crazy hit in the Western world and elsewhere around the world. I think that was the first really K-pop song I ever heard was by P.S.Y. I think a lot of people were introduced to uh, South Korean music by that song Gangnam Style. So I guess it's the name of this place. So that tells me something I didn't know. That I'm gonna struggle to pronounce a lot of these names. So if you're gonna be that person in the comment <laughs> section being like, he didn't pronounce it properly. Well, I know you're not perfect either. So try me. Now Gangnam is this very hosh posh kind of Hollywood style side of South Korea. It is beautiful. It's ah well, that would make sense why. A song was made out of this place, based on this place. It's kind of like Jake Paul bragging about being in LA, I guess. Lit with neon lights, and it definitely is a place that I recommend you check out. But I must say that while it was beautiful, it's definitely much more the local South Korean side of things. And while that can be an amazing thing, it can also make things a little bit more difficult. To best explain that, I'll give you the other side of the equation, which is Hongdae. Hongdae is the university town in South Korea, and things are a bit more compact. It's easier to walk from place to place. You still have that beautiful vibrancy. You've got the night markets, you've got amazing shopping, affordable prices in some areas. While the accommodations is probably going to be around the most expensive you'll find in South Korea. Now with that being said though, it is worth every penny. Hongdae is the place that I recommend you stay in because if you're an English speaker look at that food look at the city the city looks wonderful um, looks very well developed looks exciting it looks fresh and it looks it looks uh, there's also some old in there it looked like there were some markets I'm not sure maybe I imagined that but <laughs> Looks like a very sort of modern uh, city. It definitely makes it easier to get around. There was more places that had English menus, but there's still going to be a bit of a language barrier. Which brings me to... I think this video was made for, especially for people thinking about, well, traveling to South Korea. Because he's talking about the different areas and how easy it is to get around. And... Um, the university uh, area. Those people who are not really going to, intending to visit there anytime soon, uh, probably wouldn't find this information that, um, uh, you know, that interesting, that useful. But, you know, for people who are just interested in finding out about the life in South Korea, like me, I guess. Uh, maybe one day, who knows, maybe one day I'll be convinced to pay a visit. Or maybe I live here. How do you know? Let's continue. Point number three, the language barrier is sometimes quite real in South Korea. Oh, Most language. people don't really speak English that well, and I don't speak Korean that well. From time to time, you it can be hard wave. to order from a restaurant, talk to a taxi driver. Another thing that makes it challenging is they have their own completely unique alphabet, which, mind you, is actually a very cool alphabet. I mean, just look at that. Very cool, Korea. Now that we're in the 21st century, one- Very fascinating, isn't it, language? And especially the symbol, well, not especially, I shouldn't say, but from uh, a, a different perspective, the, the languages like, um, you know, like Mandarin, like Japanese, seem South Korean. He didn't say what the language was actually called, I don't think. But, uh, you know, like ancient uh, Egyptian hieroglyphics. Is also very interesting to see uh, different uh, ways of writing and understanding language. And it would be very helpful for, um, you know, people to be able to communicate. So that's a, a useful thing to uh, be able to know if you're intending to visit somewhere. One of the things we've become reliant on is our phones, on Google Maps, on Yelp, those GPS based apps that help us get from place to place, finding the best restaurants, the best bars, figuring out where to go, how to get there. And something that really made Korea challenging for me was the fact 
that GPS is kind of like disabled here. This is the only country in the entire world that does not have Google Maps. Even their friendly neighbors to the north have Google Maps. Now, the reason they act- Wait, that is very surprising. South Korea is the only country that doesn't have Google Maps. That's quite baffling to hear. You just, even Syria has Google Maps. But I suppose no one is there to stop them. Uh, I don't know. Uh, you know, there's places in the world you would think wouldn't have it. Um, but South Korea, I mean, North Korea I would expect not to have it. How did they allow Google to come in with their cameras? Or did they do it by satellite? How, how, I'm interested to know why. Actually don't have it is actually because of that very same reason. Apparently South Korea wants to limit how much of the GPS and map systems are publicly available. There are some Korean equivalents, but the thing is they're not currently in English. With that being said, I was able to use Google Maps to some extent. It just won't really show you how long it takes to get from place to place. You can still see your blue dot walking around the map because it won't show you where to walk. I found that it was a little bit helpful for bus routes because when I needed to do a long distance, I could still see which way the bus station was I could still see which direction it ran even though it didn't really give me an accurate time estimate I was usually able to somehow use that a little bit I want to talk about a place by the name of I still don't really understand uh, this thing about the GPS they said they didn't want it for some reason do you know any more um, information that could help me understand why does North Korea have it but not South Korea Fascinating common behavior. Ground. Now, common ground is these shipping containers that have been turned into a very trendy place to get a coffee, get some food, and do a bit of shopping. One morning, we started off our day here, and these are some of the restaurants I highly recommend you check out. So, Ali is explaining that essentially there's a vacuum created by this, and it's sucking the water upward into this cup here. Oh, he's gonna flush it like a toilet. Oh, here we go. Oh! Well, that's certainly unique. It's always nice in when you go and visit somewhere and they show you, you can vis visibly see how they're making the food or the coffee. And it's always helps if it's interesting, of course. What a spectacle for me. Oh, coffee magic here, folks. Oh, look at the mushroom on top. And yeah. six mushroom hours later, coffee. it is ready. Petsy doesn't even like coffee, but she can appreciate the craft. I don't always drink black coffee, but with this style of coffee, I would. It's a solid cheese block. <laughs> no, it's red. red. Oh. oh my gosh, it's like a golden brick of life. I love it. Extremely cheesy to me. That's what we like to see. Cheese, I love bread. I love bread. That's like four dollars. Also, this coffee was four dollars. There are so many cool places to eat here, and and it also brings me to my next point, which is Korea's love for everything that is cute and weird. I'm so sick of the world telling me what I can and can't do. Well, that reminds me of uh, Japan. They have. They are very known for. Embracing the acute and the weird, and the very crazy to you. So it seems South Korea have a similar um, appeal. I'm the fly. Ooh. So I've never in my life. I've always wanted to try that black ice cream. I say always, but I only discovered that it existed very recently on pictures. So I want a black ice cream. I've heard of people having like charcoal ice cream and charcoal flavor this, charcoal flavor that. Maybe that's what it is. I never had really charcoal flavor anything, but it seems to be a trend. I've seen this emerging. before, but I just got handed a guide on how to care for a marimo. These are 40 year old marimos, but they didn't always start off what so a big. Marimo? They're basically a giant algae oh, ball or a plant. Guy, Those little bored. guys right there are about one month to one year. When do they start talking and saying daddy? I don't know if they ever do. Of and of course, you could get some slime. Mm, oh, yeah. I'm having way too much fun in here. They have a phone case called Wiggle Wiggle. <laughs> We're gonna take our relationship to a next level. We spent about an hour and a half to two hours shopping at around three or four of these stores in Common Ground. Very quirky now, before behavior. I get a noise complaint, I figured I'd move on to the next point, which is that you must check out the nearby coffee shops. If we find it, this is truly a hidden gem. This is so cool. Hidden in the... 
People are obsessed with coffee shops. I really don't know why. Maybe I should go to one one day. Maybe I'll find out what all the fuss is about. In the midst of all the repair shops, all the mechanics, is like this converted garage that's become this really trendy coffee shop. Based on coffee and column coffee. And these are these incredibly trendy, hipstery, very... Ooh, matcha is really big here in Korea. I have no idea what it is, but it's amazing. You don't want to know what it is. <laughs> what number are we on? Now? Coffee shops. Now, on to the next point. I want to talk about transportation. And number I know eight. this next comment might be a little bit controversial because I've just watched three YouTubers review on South Korea and they all said that the metro system was cheap, affordable, and easy to use. Okay, so here is the situation with transit from somebody who can't speak Korean and can definitely not read it. It is very challenging. The metro system here is a bit of a nightmare. Nothing was written in English. Well, why didn't you learn Korean before you went to South Korea? Why would it be written in English? Well, I mean, it's a pretty popular language, to be fair. But... You get my, my emotion. Um, but yeah, None of the locals fully understood to know. what we were saying and we couldn't use Google Maps to tell us where to go. So we got in the metro anyways just to test it out and yes, it was very efficient. It was actually super quiet, super clean. The quietest metro system I've ever taken. But we ended up going in the wrong direction and there was no English signs to tell us otherwise. And that would be the last time that we tried using it on our entire trip. Buses were... A business ah! without .com is like a tree without the ropes. Without .com, something's missing. They're actually still usable, as I said before, using kind of a primitive Google Maps. I was able to figure out where the pickups were and if they were the right bus based on the numbers. But because we were in a big group of four of us, we actually spent most of our time taking taxis. And here's some great news for you wanting to travel South Korea. We are not setting foot in another bus or metro system. Taxis are so cheap. We just took one that was probably about 15, 20 minutes and we paid around six US dollars. Starting around three dollars and having Pretty the meter cheap. raise very slowly, sometimes even cheaper if you're in a big group to take a taxi for the short distance. Also, do not bother with Uber unless you want Uber Black because that's the only version they have available and unless you're made of paper money, then it's not. I've only ever taken an Uber once and I got in the wrong one. I got in someone else. Oh, I didn't order an Uber. I just ordered a normal taxi, but I didn't realize that what came was an Uber, so I got in, and it wasn't for me, I didn't order an Uber. So it just so happened that the neighbor ordered an Uber at the same time that I ordered a taxi, and I got in their Uber. Oopsie to me! for you. Now a bit of information on prices. I would say South Korea is definitely a bit more expensive than your average Asian city, but not as expensive as like let's say Tokyo. So some prices that you should know about are of course going to be the transportation, which I've already shared a little bit about. Now going on to accommodations, hostels can be as cheap as like $10 a night, whereas if you want a mid to entry level hotel, you're looking around 50 US a night. If you want something nice like we had in the Gangnam district, we stayed at Glad Live, Glad Live. And it was 90 US a night, it was so absolutely bad. beautiful, but it wasn't necessarily the most centrally located hotel. We also stayed in Hongdae. So for $80 US a night, this is where we're staying. It's called Twins Guest House. It's in a more expensive area by the name of Hongdae. It's in a great location. We got this bed, we got an extra bed, and this is all ours. We got a knock on the door, they're like, yeah, sorry, we put you in the wrong room. Still nice. We still have, I don't know how to call this, like a bunny, bunny <laughs> bed? A little makeup station. Yeah. There's one bed, and there's, there's Ketsu's bed. And a bathroom. Hongdae will be a bit more expensive than Gangnam, but I want to reiterate that I do think Hongdae is probably the best bet for most people wanting to visit South Korea. Now, as for the price of food, well, that'll be discussed a little bit more throughout this video, but you can find very affordable food, like as cheap as five to six dollars for an entire meal. You can find a massive platter of local food for 10 US dollars. So I did find food. that food in Korea was reasonable to even sometimes being quite cheap. Now my next tip, find a local guide if you can. Maybe you have a friend that lives in South Korea or your friend has a- So food and accommodation, extremely important variables to consider. Of course you're going to be wanting to eat the local food and of course you want to be able to sleep locally too. 
So good prices are very fortunate for you. But the thing is, whatever the prices are, you'll probably end up paying it anyway, even if they are high, because they're necessities. You're going there to eat food, you need to eat food, you need to sleep, you need somewhere to stay uh, close to where everything is. So that's sort of the thing that people will be willing to pay, you know, sort of, uh, they'll probably, even if they don't really feel comfortable, they will do it anyway because... Because they just kind of have to, you know, on holiday. As a friend, take an opportunity to reach out to these people because it is a bit of a more challenging place to tackle being such a large city with sometimes a bit of a language barrier. But if you find those local guides, that is where you'll find your local gems. And thank you to Hien for being such an amazing guide to us. She showed us so much of the city. Now, later that night, we actually met up with Hien and she showed us this traditional style Korean restaurant. And this is something I highly recommend to you. Okay, well, that was the end of the temp. The temp was having a local guide. And that's something that, uh, you know, I think probably would be very useful on, on a holiday in a land where you can't speak the language. Hopefully the guide speaks, can understand you and you can understand them. Otherwise that would be very awkward for you. But, uh, you know, someone to show you around the, uh, the, the areas, like a tourist, like a tour basically and someone to help you i'm not sure how much they cost did he mention i already forgot but yeah sounds int this video is definitely for people who are considering actually going he's talking about prices of the food prices of the accommodation finding a guide uh talking about the areas and uh, which ones are more accessible talking about the uh, ooh, the trains and the taxis how easy all that stuff is transportation so you know it's very much trying to be uh, informative for travelers um so I, i'm not sure why he's in south korea if it was a holiday or for work but uh, I'm not sure how popular it is uh, for that sort of thing. For I don't really hear people say they're going to South Korea for a holiday, for instance. Uh, or to work, for that matter. But, um, you know, I can definitely see uh, sort of an appeal so far. Definitely seems like it's exciting. Hopefully, in, uh, as we go on, we'll see more of what there is. Uh, I imagine it's very different to what's um, a bit up uh, in the north. So, yes, don't um, don't write down, don't get the tickets for the wrong um, for the wrong area. <laughs> Can you even get tickets to North Korea? Um, you probably can't. I doubt there's many flights going to North Korea um, in front the majority of the time. Uh, but then again, I don't really know. Um, how would you get to South Korea? Are there direct flights? Um, but, but, but. Yes, it seems we haven't got... I would like to see more shots of things. We see shots of food very briefly. We see some shots of um, restaurants very briefly. I would like to see more of... Um, like, just out and about. Like, camera held, handheld. Um, show us the streets. Show us... Um, what there is. Uh, so, yes, if you want to see uh, me continue this video, then do give it a thumbs up and do comment below. Tell me your thoughts, show me your crimes, and remember, jump on that subscribe button. If you would like to eat the cheese, farewell, my munchins, take care of my munchins. <laughs>